Hello, I'm David Parker and I work in the Met Office Hadley Centre in the Climate Monitoring and Attribution Group. And a very important aspect of our work is to study and analyse and improve all the data from the observations which have been made over the past two centuries. A lot of our work has appeared prominently in the reports of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Several of the obstacles that we have to overcome in analysing these data are discussed further on in this podcast. One of the problems we have to deal with is that the data from the past are not complete. Many areas of the world had no observations, especially before the middle of the 20th century. Since the 20th century, there have been a rapid improvement in coverage of many kinds of data, with weather balloons and then satellites. One of the improvements we've made, however, even to the earlier part of the record in the last few years, is that we've been able to key in to computers many of the old observations made from ships way back till uh, even the 18th century. And these are turning out to be very useful in our analyses of climate change. Quite a few of the uh, newly computerised observations were included in the 2007 report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and even more data are being computerised now and will appear in future analyses. Some information on past climate comes from indirect measurements such as tree rings or the temperatures down oil well boreholes. These are not as precise as modern instrumental data but they do confirm the older instrumental data in suggesting there was generally a slightly colder climate in say the 17th and 18th century. So they are a useful backup to what we know from instrumental data. A very important part of our work has been to examine all the old data and adjust them to compensate for the different way that the observations were taken. Uh, an important example is sea surface temperatures. Until about the middle of the 20th century, sea surface temperatures were generally measured using canvas buckets. The bucket was let down over the side of the ship and when it had filled with water it then was hauled back up again and the thermometer dipped in. Unfortunately during this process the water usually cooled off in the wind and so we had to calculate adjustments for these data. Similarly for modern data we have to calculate some adjustments too. Uh, satellite data, for example, measure the very surface skin of the ocean and that gives a different value from what is measured, for example, by a buoy, maybe a metre below the surface, or a ship's hull thermometer measured perhaps 10 metres below the surface. So we also have to apply some adjustments to those. But we have sufficient information to do this fairly reliably and we have been able to create reliable long-term estimates of sea surface temperature since the mid-19th century. It is very important to make allowances for varying observation practices, not only varying instruments, varying observation practices and internationally um, we have been able to support the development of a set of climate monitoring principles and these say that when practices or instruments are changed there should be a period of overlap between two methods so that comparisons can be made between the old and the new and adjustments made accordingly. This of course can be somewhat expensive because if a new satellite is launched it might have very similar to in instruments to what was on the previous satellite but they are unlikely to be absolutely identical. 
and therefore it's necessary for the new satellite to be launched before the previous one has reached the end of its lifetime. And that of course is somewhat costly in terms of resources. Nonetheless, it is essential that we have a good audit trail through the whole global climate observing system so that scientists can analyse the observations and the change of climate reliably. One of the climate monitoring principles is that information about how observations were taken is as important as the observations themselves. We call this information metadata and it includes descriptions of the instruments, descriptions of the surroundings of the weather station, the time of day the observations were taken and even who took the observations. Uh, it also includes the details of the processing software which are used to, for example, create average temperatures over a one hour period. Uh, all these are important and must be recorded carefully and not lost. An important aspect of analysing climate is that we use differences from the local normal, which we call anomalies, rather than using the absolute values. This is because the anomalies vary smoothly from one place to another, whereas the absolute values vary rather rapidly. For example, the normal temperature on top of Dartmoor is perhaps three or four degrees lower than the normal temperature in Exeter but the anomaly on top of Dartmoor is likely to be very similar to that in Exeter. So when we calculate global average temperatures for 2009, we will average anomalies over all the weather stations and from all the ships and satellites over the world, and we'll average this anomaly um, and a value will be published. It is sometimes confusing to people that we do this because they don't know what the world average temperature is. We have actually calculated that and it is about 14 degrees. So if the anomaly is one degree for the world then that means the average surface temperature over the world is 15 degrees. Because the observations of climate are not made everywhere in the world, we have to interpolate the gaps. Also because the observations have imperfections and biases we have to make allowances for those and complex statistical theories have been developed to estimate the uncertainties in the global temperatures. These have been published in the reports of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and we have shown that the uncertainties in the annual global surface temperatures are much smaller than the estimated global warming in the last 100 years. Finally, I need to say that the work that you've seen on this podcast is only a small example of what we're doing in the Climate Monitoring and Attribution Group of the Met Office Hadley Centre. The analyses that we have created so far have been the best available with the data that we have and we are always striving to improve the analyses and the uncertainties as new data become available and new analytical techniques become available. You can find out more on the climate research part of the Met Office website.